Now, I don't make videos like this very often because I know a lot of people don't want to hear it. But for the few people that do, it can make a life-changing difference. I know it made a life-changing difference for me, and I'll share some personal information um, about exactly how that worked, which I always feel uncomfortable doing, but it's worth it for the sake of helping you out of the situation. Most people feel like their life is stuck. Like if you've got a situation where maybe years of hardship have piled up, or maybe you had a really rough childhood or something like that, and like there's a lot of devastating things have happened to you, and here you are right now, what are you supposed to do? And a lot of times people feel like, well, it's, it's an overwhelming task to get out of it. It's too much. But your life is a lot more malleable than you think it is. And the reason it seems like it's not more malleable is because you can't make the change by yourself. Like it's very, very difficult to think of a new idea in isolation. And I'll, I'll prove it to you right now. Think of a new idea that's useful that you've never thought of before. You can't do it, right? It's really, really hard to do that. Now, I'm not a psychologist. Like, I, I don't really know exactly what I'm talking about, but I've read that 85% of the thoughts that you have today are also thoughts that you had yesterday. And about 15%, the remaining 15% of the new thoughts that you're having today are triggered by incidental things. Like, maybe your refrigerator broke today. It wasn't broken yesterday, but now it is today, so you're thinking about how to fix it. And that is basically 100% of your thoughts for the day. So when you're trying to pull your life out of years of hardship, it just doesn't happen by itself. Like you, you can't really do it in isolation and you can't do it if you're not surrounded by people who are successful in your view, right? Like the people that, if they don't have the lifestyle that you want to have, then it's very hard to just be a shooting star and break out of that. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself around a community that's having the type of success that you want to have and then you sort of morph into that. It kind of, it kind of rubs off on you and you begin to become kind of like the average of the successful people that you're hanging around as opposed to if you're hanging around people that you would view to be unsuccessful that don't have the lifestyle that you want, you kind of become the average of those people. So how do you break out of it? So uh, it's easy to think that that your life was really, really hard. And like, my life was kind of hard, but not nearly as hard as some of the people that I talk to. For example, I'll give you, I'll just tell you what, what I had to deal with in my life. You can think of it what you want. It, your life's probably harder than mine. For the first 15 years, I had a really good life. <laughs> you know, like my parents were together. I liked my friends at school, lived in a nice neighborhood and stuff. And like, everything was, everything was fine. Like I had this really easy life and a great childhood. But then from like 16 to like 20, like over that three or four year period there, my parents got divorced. Both of my grandparents that I was really close to, they both died within months of each other. My mom got cancer and died. <laughs> and I was in college at the time when she passed away. And it's like, you know, I, I couldn't finish college because you know, she was helping me pay for college. And then she died. I was like, well, I'm never going to be able to afford the, the last year of school. So I just crammed all of my credits into the third year of school so that I could graduate still without having to pay for the fourth year. So that was really hard. And then after I got out of college, I didn't have any money to live anywhere. So my, my brother graciously let me just live in his house for a little bit until I could get a job and whatever. So basically I went from this like really nice life to homeless <laughs> in a matter of a couple of years. So like that was really hard. And I can remember, I remember like kind of just lying on this like bench slash couch thing in my brother's house where he was letting me sleep, thinking to myself, this is crazy. <laughs> like, what am I going to do? This is really, really hard. And I'm sad too, right? Because I lost my parents and my grandparents. And like, I, I, didn't, I didn't really have anybody to, to, as a mentor or anything, like I didn't have anybody to look up to or whatever, just kind of by myself. And like, just me and my older brother, who was kind of acting like a, like a little bit of a mentor, but we're both kids. Like, you know, he's doing the best he could. But that was freaking hard. But here's the thing, like, I don't look back at that and be like, oh, well, that damaged my ability to succeed. I look at that and saying, if I hadn't had that hardship, I would have never had a chance to develop the strength to do hard things. Like, I was just pushed into that position, and I had to make a decision. Well, I'm just going to let it just sit here and, and crush me, or am I going to push this thing out of the way and do something about it? So I went and I got a job. So I, I actually did pretty well in college. I ended up you know, graduating like magna cum laude, phi, phi beta kappa, and 
I got all kinds of accolades and stuff. So I had a pretty good resume coming out of school. So I went and I got a job doing bioterrorism surveillance for the government. And that's a pretty decent job. I kind of like the concept of the job, but I kind of look at the people that I'm surrounded by. And I was like, I don't really want to have this life going forward forever. Right? It's like I was talking to people that are like Microsoft certified engineers and stuff like that, which is totally cool. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just like I didn't, it wasn't satisfying my entrepreneurial spirit. Like I didn't, I wanted to be able to create things and, and, you know, be more involved with the people that I'm helping rather than just kind of crunch numbers and do computer science all the time. So I stopped doing that. It was a kind of on like a contract. So I stopped that contract or after it expired, I went and I started and I got a job doing, um, with a couple startup companies, internet companies, like an e-learning company that was really fun to work with, and then uh, another internet startup. And then in 2002, I started my own web agency because like, cause now I'm kind of in this community of people starting up businesses and doing cool stuff. And like, I'm, I'm kind of surrounded by people that I want to be like. And then because of that, you know, that kind of rubbed off on me and I was able to kind of become like them. And that's the point. It's like, so you need to get around a community of people that will support you. And there's lots of ways to do that. Sometimes you can just, you know, just be part of this YouTube channel or like, I'll put a link in the description to our Facebook group, join the group. I'm in the group and I'll be your biggest fan. Like I love to see people have success. And if there's something that I can do to contribute to your success, I'm in, I'm all in even for free, like join the group. There's tons of free resources in this channel here. Like check out a bunch of these videos. And even if you want to, we can do a free 45 minute one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, totally for free, where we can just talk about where you wanna go and how to get there and what are the stepping stone milestones to get there. So if you want to go to doublestack.net slash call, find a spot on my calendar and book a time for us to just hop on a free Zoom call. So like there is, there are tons of people that will help and support you even for free. You know, through all of these different channels. So surround yourself by people that can help you because what you're really trying to do is you're trying to look inside and figure out what are the ingredients inside of you and then how can you mash that up to do something that you love doing, something that you're really good at doing, something that's gonna help people. But the problem is if you're inside the bottle, it's hard to read the ingredients label from inside the bottle. So you need to get around people who can look at the bottle read the label and tell you, right? So, so you, it's so much easier that way. Because if you don't, if you're by yourself, you're just gonna be banging your head on the wall and it's, first it's gonna hurt, and then you're gonna get exhausted and then you'll probably give up and feel like you just can't do anything about it. And that's the problem with isolation. And so you wanna get around these people that can support and help you and there's lots of ways to do it. So that's the idea. And the, the final thing that I wanna share with you is that it's fine to set long-term goals. But if the only thing that you set are the long-term goals, you probably won't achieve them because you need the stepping stone incremental goals. You don't have to be a genius. I'm not a genius. There's people that I went to school with that were far smarter than I am. But the people that I see that are the most successful, the trait that they have, and the trait that I try to put into my life is make incremental improvements every day and don't stop. That's it. Just make a little tiny thing that you, something, it could be a tiny little thing that you've learned how to do over the next few days or the next week, and then do another tiny little thing over the next few days or the next week after that, and keep doing these tiny little steps and don't stop, and you will eventually get to where you wanna be. Most people don't do that, and that's why I told you, and most people don't wanna hear this, because it's hard, you have to have grit, you have to not give up, but there's tricks to make it easier, and the trick is, don't set these gigantic long-term goals without the incremental steps. And when you achieve the incremental step, be really happy about it. And so like I, I just did a video last week about five steps to landing your first $10,000 client. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Check that one out after this. But it's five little things that you can do that will lead to landing a $10,000 client and that $10,000 client will lead to building a six-figure business. And, that, and so like as you do each little thing, like one of the things was making like a, like an email opt-in form on your website that has a lead magnet. And then once you launch the lead magnet, feel good about it. They'll be like, man, that's pretty cool. Look at what I've done. I've, I've made this goal happen. And that's a good, a good stepping stone on the way to this larger thing. And so the way that I know that most people don't do this is because like, think about people that have New Year's resolutions to go to the gym or something like that. And they'll set these long-term goals. Be like, yeah, man, I wanna lose 20 pounds or something like that. It might take a few months to get there. And then they go to the gym and they burn out within a few weeks. 
because they don't have the stepping stone goals. And that might have happened to you. I know it happened to me in the beginning. I used to set long-term goals and with no idea how to get there and I'd burn out and stop. But then I got around successful people. They told me how to fix it. We started doing these incremental things and it totally changed my life. It fundamentally, dramatically changed my life by getting around successful people, setting incremental goals, and then having other people help me come up with the ideas to actually fulfill in all of those goals. And that's what I'm offering to you. So join our Facebook group. I'm putting a link in the description. Tons of awesome people in that group. And if there's anything that I can do to support you, I will be your biggest fan. Leave a comment here. Let me know what you're going through. And if there's anything that I know or I can do, I'll support you in it. And if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one call, we can do that too. So you can go over to doublestack.net slash call. Okay, so check out this next video and I'll show you the five incremental steps to landing your first $10,000 web design client. Okay, I'll see you in just a minute.